guys, this is Rob from Classic Car Living. Welcome back to my page. Today I'm doing a video which is a compilation of all the different docu stories that I've done since I started the page back in December. You're going to have all the hyperlinks to each of the stories if you want to go back and watch them. Thanks for the support and let's take a look at these stories. And then finally I, I moved into a, uh, a 1989 Starion ESIR Mitsubishi. What's that? 200 horsepower, four summer. 16 valve. And that car I loved. That car was stick shift, uh, had offset wheels, you know, wide, super wide wheels. We would wait for the weekend after we would, you know, get out of school and work and all that stuff. And we wait for the weekend, go wash our cars together and and get them spotless and then go cruising in the Grove or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, around Miami and, and, you know, hear how they sound and all that stuff. And we would buy like the, back in the day, they used to use bras for the cars to protect up the front. So wow. this thing is nice, man. You like it? Oh my God. Holy smoke. I'm a little big for this car. But... Oh, ducks. We got ducks in the road. Oh my oh, god. Oh, duck crossing. Poor things. So how does it feel? Love it. It's got, it just feels nice. It's a 1969 Mustang, a true Mach 1. It's, uh, uh, if you come over here, it's been prostreated. Basically, the whole rear end's been chopped, and the frame was rebuilt, and it has uh, aluminum panels in the back that were all riveted on. So basically, it's got the drag, it's got the rear end of a drag car, and uh, the front end of a of a street car, and that's what kind of gives it the pro street name. But uh, it's got a 427 Windsor up front. It's aluminum heads, big cam, single plane intake, you know the works. Uh, just recently installed air conditioning on it. I uh, did a custom setup there where I rerouted the lines away from the engine. So you did a lot of custom work? Oh yeah, and I do all the work myself. How do you work goes? I didn't really do much to it other than just protect it with you know wax and polish. But you, you're a young guy in a classic car. Tell me you know, about that. Uh, let's just say a lot of older guys, they're not too happy. Sometimes they get a little, um, I don't know, they, they always think it's my dad's car or something of the sort, and it's not. But And they always think that I don't know what I'm doing or what I'm looking at, so they try to explain my own car to me. But um, it's, it's great though, because if there's any time to enjoy a nice car, especially it's when you're young, um, you get to do things that you don't have the time to when you're older. And that's one of the great things about having a car like this is that you able to go out, enjoy yourself and go to, go to meets and things like that. And that, that's fun. My name is Andy and I own this 1964 Fiat Cabriolet Spider. I found this car in the newspaper back in 1999. Um, There's a gentleman selling the car after a Hurricane Andrew. The owner, this car has a beautiful history and story. Um, the owner purchased the car, it was a lady that purchased the car in New York in 1964. She was in the Air Force. She was a, uh, I think it was, she was a sergeant or a lieutenant, I forgot, in the Air Force. And she was stationed in Homestead Air Force Base. He documented every purchase, every time that she would actually put fuel in the vehicle. This is 1964. Um, on uh, August 3rd, uh, she put, uh, she had 641 miles, eight gallons of fuel for $2.40. So she would actually document everything that she did to the car all the way to the day that she passed. No, no roof on it. The uh, front wheel shoe it was cracked. No seats. The floor was all rotten out. The engine didn't start, had originally 20,000 miles on it, original documented miles. Right now it has 27,000 original miles. Wow. So the car basically had to restore everything. I took the car completely apart in my garage. I restored it twice. The first time it took me probably two and a half years to find the parts. Uh, like I said, it's a very rare car. There's no parts. You can't just call Fiat. There's nothing left for this car. It's a, it's a model that they, they built a lot of them, but for whatever reason, there's no parts out there. Those are for the Fiat as well. Pina Farina would design cars and use the same parts for multiple cars. And uh, so he used a Ferrari 250 lights on my Fiat. So 
I have some Ferrari in it. <laughs> it's cousins. I'm here with Victor, and this is my 1969 Mach 1 S code. So Victor, tell me a little bit about this car. Well, this was a car that I picked up in uh, Indiana almost about 14 years ago now. So one of the one of the important things if you ever think about putting one of these cars together is to build yourself a, a, a book. So I put together a, a book with these pictures. Uh, here you can see the outside of the cow so it doesn't look too bad. But when we opened it up, this is basically what the cow looked like. Um, at the time I had not seen your video on how to buy a classic car. <laughs> this is one of the things that you mentioned is to pour the water in here and see if it leaks on the inside. So you can see actually how, how bad it was. All of that needed to be completely wow. replaced. These were the torque boxes that I, I took talked to you about. Wow, um, that was the the rust there. Um, these were the floor pans. So this was a lesson learned. And for all of those out there who may be doing anything with the floor pans on this Mustang, um, once you go and you have to replace two floor pans, my suggestion is just replace the whole sheet. So those tags and markings, as you can see, the one on the uh, left hand side there. Basically, it's about the differential on your car. Some of these markings were inspection markings that they used at the time. For factory. For factory, that's correct. So this car is a San Jose car. Uh, it's an early 1969. It was actually uh, built in March of 1969. Um, I researched how the inspection stamps were there. They were different at each of the factories. So in San Jose at that time, they used these um, stamps, okay, from the in inspector. My Mustang buddies telling me they couldn't hear me coming. So now good. I got a MagnaFlow in here and uh, they don't kid me anymore. Jesus Herrera, known as Black Jesus. I have a 1955 Chevy 3100 second series. It's been in the making for about eight years now. From the original, I'll show you a picture of the car, the truck. This is the original picture of the truck when I first got it. Wow. Uh, What's next? Uh, it's gonna. I'm gonna convert it, uh, the motor, and you should have a blower. Took the blower out. Now it's gonna go with velocity stacks, uh, fuel injection. The rear is the whole chassis is topped in the back, shaved door handles, AC, big motor, uh, chip foose wheels, wheelwood brakes, QA1 uh, uh, coilovers on it. All right, so we got another 1966 Resto Mod here. We're going to meet the owner and we're going to find out what he's done to this car and the history behind it. I'm Patricio and this is my 1966 Ford Mustang GT. I was gifted this car by my father uh, for my 15th birthday as a, um, as a project. All right, so the idea was that we were gonna work on it together, restore it, and it all started in January, 1993. Oh, by the way, and this, this was back in, in Bolivia, in La Paz. So the, the, the amount of Mustangs available out there were not that many. We found crazy cars. I even ran into a 66 with a four-door conversion. Just trying to avoid to have the extra lights and everything on the front apron. I was trying to keep right. it as simple as possible. And the, the hood, you got the... The hood, we changed the, the central locking system for two push pins. So we got two push pins that easily will, will pop up the hood like that and, and keep it simple. And this is the baby, huh? And that's a baby right there, 347 stroker, full AC. I have a manual uh, rack and pinion. I, uh, at first, I did put a power steering unit in it that installed a full Sony um, radio system with six speakers in it. The radio system is, is uh, compatible with uh, CarPlay. So I have all the modern amenities of, the, uh, of, a, of a modern car on the, on the Classic. It has a rear, view, um, a rear view camera. As you can tell, it's got the GT fog lights. Obviously, it, this is not a GT car, but it just enhances the look of this thing and it actually makes it look awesome. So when you're running down the road, you turn on those fog lights and it just looks a lot better. The normal lights, are not very good at night, so I kind of travel with them. So I'll turn on the lights now so you can see them. One of the things that I did do to this car was add the rally wheels and the double red lines. I think it is gives it a great touch with the red. 14 inch, nothing big, pony interior 
with the original radio, the AC, which really doesn't work, unfortunately, I don't have the compressor for it. It's automatic. I did get the center console on eBay. Gail Haldeman was the actual Ford designer that designed the Ford Mustang. Pick my sketch to be put on the driver's side of the clay. I saw a documentary on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, excuse me, and I searched for him and I found him and I sent him a Facebook message and his daughter answered, you think he'll sign my glove box? She said, absolutely, send it to me and we'll get it done. I sent it to him, he signed it. She had taken some pictures of him signing my glove box and about a year later, unfortunately, he passed away, so... I'm Hank Tester, and I own this 1957 PV444 Volvo. This is the same model and year that I drove in college. Not the same car, but yes it is, and when I get into this car, I am 21 years old again. Uh, and you'll notice it has some Arizona stuff on it from my college and so on but I found an old original cantaloupe crate and that's what you would keep all your stuff in and put it in the back of the trunk. How did you find this car? This car, all right, so I, I, I sold it when I got in, you know, because, hey, it was a college car you drove. And I bought an Austin Healey, of course. You like it? We are from Sweden. Ah, <laughs> you know. I drive Volvo, Volvo Amazon. How, how, how close is it? Is it, look, is it looking pretty good? Yeah, it's very fine. The 18 engine, there's the SU carburetors that we uh, talked about. Um, there's the Volvo red block. Um, not much has been done. We, we think this is the original engine. We don't think it's been pulled. The previous guy was a, that, that owned it was kind of a shade tree mechanic, and so he, he, this is home built. This is Jack. This is my 1957 Chevy Bel Air. I bought this car in 1990 from a lady that lives in the city of Miami. It was in pretty poor shape, but I was able to drive it home. It sat for a couple of years, so I saved some money and I took it to a friend of mine's shop up in uh, Pompano Beach and we started working on it. I have an album with all the pictures of uh, the progression of the car. Interior also, Interior, correct? Interior, all original, yeah. There so, are original covers that were put back on. How was the condition of your interior? Oh, it was trashed. Oh. It was trashed. Oh, yeah? yeah so you had to redo the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing came out. It was all um, primered and coated and put back together and all the seats were primered and painted and put back together. Okay. This one was bought in 1988 from my neighbor, yeah. Wow. It is absolutely gorgeous. This one's all original. Small block. Wow. This is the original window sticker that I got from the lady I bought it from, that's her. I bought, she bought it in 1957, and then I bought it in 1990. Uh, she runs out to me and says, sir, here, this goes with the car. She gave me an envelope full of the window sticker, the bill of sale. Oh, the power steering makes a big difference in this Absolutely. car. Absolutely. So, I mean, I can turn it with one finger if I want. Right. It feels great. Yeah, driving down the road, it feels great. On the highway, it's the same thing. You don't, you don't feel nothing. I am Tony, and this is my 1968 GT500 Tribute. I bought this car in 2018 for my... 50th birthday. Stay with the 427, but we, like I said, pulled it apart, balanced and boosted it, makes everything was perfect. Um, and you know, I can't speak well enough about Prestige Motorsports, the guys in North Carolina that originally built it. It always had an overheating problem. I think it was probably built for that weather. It just never handled the humidity and heat down here very well. Uh, so I kind of started trying to find a way to solve that problem. So I decided uh, to set it back to the original builder. You can't get those Shelby rims with the sizes that I wanted. Uh, so. We went with these, and these are Hillebrand. They're very much like, uh, sorry, they look like the Hillebrands, and they are uh, like we see on the Cobras. And talk to me about the stance. The stance is mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the stance is, we're lowered here obviously quite a bit. Probably, I think you have a Shelby typically goes standard to the back, and then maybe one and a half drop on the front, inch drop on the front. I think we are about uh, two and two and a half all the way around. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate your support. Remember, I try to post weekly, so make sure you subscribe, share, and comment. It helps me out to build the page up. I really appreciate your support. Take care. Till next week.